everybody and welcome back. As always, I am Mateo311 and this is your channel for everything VR related. So today we're going to be discussing why VR will be fire in 2024. 2023 just went out with a major bang and I'm expecting things will get much better in the following year. Now there are of course links and timestamps if you want to skip ahead, but before we jump in, I have to mention that there's only a few days left in my holiday giveaway. So many amazing VR accessory companies and game studios have donated both hardware and game keys. Now I'm not just giving away any old junk here, because this giveaway includes most of my favorite VR games from 2023, including titles like Arizona Sunshine 2, Assassin's Creed Nexus, Demio Battles, and Vertigo 2. On the hardware side, we have the amazing Elite Strap with Battery Pack from Kiwi, Prescription Lens Inserts from VR Rock, and the extremely comfortable Quest 3 hand straps from AMVR. I've personally used all of these products and played all of these games and highly recommend each and every one. So thanks again to all of my channel sponsors for making this possible. There's links down below if you want to check out their sites. And of course, there's also a link to the giveaway page. Okay, so let's get back to the topic of what's going to make VR so good in 2024. And I'm happy to report that there's plenty of exciting software and hardware on the way. Let's start with software. And I'm going to kind of organize this based on the overall hype level that I have, how excited I am for each one of these things. Now, this first topic might be a bit of copium here, but I'm still very hopeful that Sony will do something to surprise us. It's been 10 months since the release of the PlayStation VR 2, and Sony hasn't really dropped any major VR titles. Now, I know what you guys are about to say. You're about to call me out, say, what are you talking about? You're completely wrong. Sony released four major VR games in only 10 months, and unfortunately, that's just not true. They ported three high-end games into VR, which is Resident Evil 8, Resident Evil 4 Remake, and Gran Turismo. And then they gave us one exclusive VR game, which was Horizon Call of the Mountain, which is definitely not AAA caliber. It was a very good game, but not AAA caliber. I wouldn't say it's a system seller either. The problem with these hybrid games, as good as they may be, they don't give a person any reason to buy a PlayStation VR 2. If you wanted those games and you own a PlayStation 5, you already bought those games and you're not going to go out and spend an extra $500 on an accessory to replay the game. So these are hybrid titles or ported titles. They're not AAA VR games. They're not giving people a reason to jump into VR. Unfortunately, that is just the truth there. Deal with it. That being said, though, I think Sony understands that they have to up their game when it comes to VR and hybrid or just ported titles are not going to cut it anymore. For better or worse, 2024 is going to be a make it or break it year for the PlayStation VR 2. Now, I don't believe Sony's ready to call it quits and the best titles on a platform usually come when it's more than a year old. So let's hope Sony already invested some time and money on bringing some first party IPs into VR. After plenty of hours in Asgard's Wrath 2, I know just how good a God of War VR can actually be. But holding out for PlayStation VR 2 might be a lost cause. So let's move on to a much better bet with Oculus Studios. And no, that was not a slip up. I said Oculus on purpose because Meta has retained that name for their development studio. Oculus Studios is all their first party products. And if you've been following Meta for years now, they've acquired so many VR studios that they could pretty much make all the games they want. Now, one first party IP just recently came out. That's Asgard's Wrath 2, and it has absolutely blown me away. So if this is them setting the standard, VR moving forward will be incredible. Now, I don't expect every game is going to be another Asgard's Wrath 2. That's very unlikely to think that it's just a game that Meta let Sinzaro pour their heart and soul into, said, listen, here's a blank check, wow us, and they did, at least in my humble opinion. However, they own all of these other truly impressive studios. They've owned them for years. They're all working on projects, I guarantee it. One of which may be a Batman VR game from the same studio that gave us Iron Man VR. So with Meta owning and funding the studios that brought us games like Iron Man VR, Lone Echo, Echo VR, Population One, and also the studio that gave us the amazing Resident Evil 4 port, there's just an absolutely insane amount of talent here. Meta is also willing to lose money to help VR grow, and some perfect examples of that are subsidizing the Quest hardware, and also giving away their most expensive VR game, Asgard's Wrath 2, completely free of charge to people who bought a Quest 3. Now, it's also been reported that Meta is working extremely hard to get another triple-A flat-screen title into VR. That could be anything right now. I know they're probably sending out feelers to anyone, something like Call of Duty, maybe Grand Theft Auto. We know they've mentioned them in the past, but we're looking for mainstream, modern game, 
brought to VR just to elevate the status of VR gaming, and there's a very good chance they'll pull it off. I just hope it works out a bit better than Medal of Honor Above and Beyond. Now, there's also a bunch of third-party titles that I'm already excited for, like the creepy story-driven gameplay we're going to get from Stranger Things VR, the ultimate mech fighting of Underdogs, and the dark fantasy world of Behemoth. There's definitely some great titles to be excited for, but I'm also hoping some other studios come out of nowhere like Servios and blow us away with their upcoming Aliens game. What makes me so excited for this title is one, it's an officially licensed game in the Alien universe, and second, it's being developed for both flat and VR gaming. This will allow the studio to invest a lot more money as they won't be reliant on just the PC VR and PlayStation VR 2 audience. So if you're looking for a title that doesn't have to scale itself down for mobile VR and you just love those high-end graphics, well then you might want to keep an eye on this up coming alien game now before we get into the exciting hardware stuff there's still a bit more software applications to discuss and i'm not just talking gaming we recently saw the introduction of mixed reality with the quest 3 and that should get much bigger and better as we move forward developers will have a lot more experience with the technology meta also introduced a lot of upgrades making the technology itself better so we can see a lot of cool new applications there I'm expecting that we'll move past the gimmick stage it's in right now. Additionally, Meta is introducing full body tracking, even though it's an approximation and you're not, you know, using body trackers, that should make VR a lot better. They've recently done tongue tracking with the MetaQuest Pro, and we also got things like Xbox Cloud Gaming. So what we're going to be able to do in VR and the experiences we have are just going to get better and better. And remember, Meta eventually wants to make this the next computing platform, a device you use kind of for everything like your cell phone. And if the device gets small enough in the next 10 years or so, like a pair of glasses, well, then that'll be, you know, this mind blowing future. Could you imagine just having everything your cell phone does in a pair of glasses or just maybe working in tandem, whatever the case may be, but just getting all that functionality, being able to say, you know, hey, Meta, what's the weather? And you see it come up somewhere, you know, in the world in front of you that's kind of the future that they've been selling us but i think we're gonna get there and we're gonna see a bit more of that you know going forward software wise and of course hardware so let's get into that now i know there's a good portion of people who have no interest in anything meta they can't stand the limitations of mobile vr and they want to push everything to the extreme well in this regard things are also looking pretty darn excellent we just got exciting prosumer headsets like the big screen beyond the price of things like vr treadmills is actually getting relatively reasonable and finally much cooler hardware is on the way Headsets like the Vario XR4 or the Somnium VR1 are once again attempting to push VR to the max. We are getting human eye resolution screens and some absolutely stunning pass-through that doesn't give us the grainy experience that we find on the Meta Quest 3. Now, the vast majority of us will never get to experience this hardware. We can't afford it. It's a bit ridiculous. However, someone sets the bar of what high end is and eventually it just makes its way down. So when we go forward a few years, this crazy high resolution display or you know human eye resolution display will become the norm for just about everyone that's definitely an exciting take but for those who love to tinker or you're an enthusiast want to see vr at the extreme well you're going to have that option in 2024. now another exciting bit of hardware that'll definitely shake up the industry is the apple vision pro which is coming in february now i know this isn't going to be a huge seller they're estimating they'll sell about a half a million units it's really expensive so obviously the average person won't buy this so you look at this video and you're like well it's not a big deal but it sends a message to the overall industry it, you know apple values vr right now and apple's going to be working to make it cheaper in their apple vision you know drop the pro that's going to be probably half the price and you know more reasonable for everyone but apple's going to do things different with vr it's going to bring more people to the market. It's going to show us VR in a different light, and it's going to be a truly magical experience if they nail it, which I expect them to do. There's also competitors, you know, coming out of the woodworks that are ready to challenge Apple. I don't know why. I don't know who wants to challenge Apple, but ByteDance and Pico already signed on to be one of those people. They said, listen, we're not going against meta low end anymore with the Pico 5. We're not going to do that. We're not going against the Quest 3. We're going against Apple. We're going high end now. Maybe there's going to be a big future market there. We have to wait and see. I would love to see that happen because if you raise the bar on the 
you know, standalone hardware in VR, things just get better for everyone. So that's some exciting stuff. Uh, obviously, you know, another big thing is Meta is just kicking butt right now. Again, I know some people hate Meta, but the Quest 2 is selling really good this holiday season. The Quest 3 is also selling really good. More people in VR, you know, more people, more better. And obviously, the last thing you have to mention when you're talking about VR hardware is the Deckard. Will the Deckard be a 2024 product? Maybe. We might see it holiday season 2024. I don't think we'll see it any earlier, but I could be wrong. You never know. Valve operates on Valve time. And that's another product that can shake up the industry. Will it be as big as the Apple Vision Pro? Who knows? You know, if Valve does things right, if they learn from their previous mistakes, they will be ready with lots of high-end software. It will work with studios and have plenty of games to go, not just one exciting title like Half-Life Alex. Additionally, you know, maybe I'm wrong here, maybe I'm naive, maybe I'm missing something, but if they decided to play nice with Sony and make all of, you know, the high-end games start releasing on PC, on, you know, their new Decker device and PlayStation VR 2, they have a pretty decent sized audience to work with and sell their games. Maybe that can all come together. The Deckard could be that device that we really want because I know a lot of people are still upset that VR has gone to mobile and it took me a while to get over that. And I'm finally happy because the quality of games like Asgard and Wrath 2 has, you know, really come up. We're finally getting some really good games. Yes, they still don't have the graphics of PC VR, but if I love a game, I love a game. Do I want the eye candy? Hell yeah. If I can't have everything, I'll just take the super exciting, fun to play game that sucks me in over the super pretty game that, you know, just has mediocre gameplay. Maybe you're different. That's me. I'm kind of happy where everything's going right now. And I think, you know, we'll get a few surprises in 2024. Of course, we'll hit another one of those lulls where people are like, VR is dead, grumble, grumble, grumble. Uh, however, I think the majority of the year is going to be pretty fantastic. So I'm excited. I hope you guys are too. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any, you know, comments, questions, feedback, I'd love to hear them down below. If you did enjoy this, thumbs up. If you're new here, consider subscribing. And I'll see you guys on next time.